What's up boys and girls, Lambu here and today's video will be all about Darks ZBZ. Obviously a lot of you have seen his recent tournament run which was incredible where he won the TSL 6 after being knocked down um, by Cyril in into the loser's break in the first round of double LM. and then he crawled his way all the way back into the grand finals and then swept Cyril there so he got his, he got his revenge in within the same tournament so a lot of you guys have asked the questions well is what what is dark doing so differently and is this the new way of playing zvz and wow is dark now much better than cyril and i'm gonna try to answer all of that at the end of the video but for now i'm gonna go a little bit in depth about what makes dark's zvz different from the standard zvz and why did it work why does it sometimes not work and yeah so so first things first the fundamental difference from the way he plays compared to how other people play is that if he goes into roaches he still makes an early layer um the way he plays muda is super standard this is not new literally everyone who, who's playing muda is playing like this um the super early layer that he always makes actually makes mudas safer than the later layer i hear a lot of casters getting this wrong very often and um, it's actually the other way around because sometimes you, you see this early layer and you're like hmm he invests so much into this into this layer right but it actually makes it so your mudas put a, a timer on your opponent that is a little bit shorter than the usual timer if you would start the layer later which means your opponent will attack with less units which means spine crawlers and banelings defensively will be a lot stronger so the way he goes mudas is nothing special the way he plays roaches though is indistinguishable from the way he plays Mura for his opponent until obviously he puts down a spire or size roach speed which this is the main difference so and, and this is also nothing new he has he has been doing this for a long time there's also players that um, copy this especially to try and snipe players like Rainer or Cyril these mind games are nothing new the difference is that Dark is doing this literally every single game because he believes this is just the way to do it and in order to explain why this is even good like why why do you need to know if it's roaches or muras the reason for that is that um if you want to play standard against muda you basically have to play um a game with very very little mistakes and that is very very hard in starcraft where the game is very fast paced and you also have no vision so your opponent can seemingly force mistakes which i don't think is the right uh, selection of words here in this scenario because it's you can theoretically you can theoretically always be in position and always be safe but it's just so so damn difficult that it's more about finding holes as the meter player than forcing your opponent to make mistakes because there usually always is a hole if you're the meter player so we see he starts off the game with a 340 layer. The early game just completely standard. He gets a third queen a little bit earlier. Some people do it a little bit later. I think he goes 31 uh, third queen and then 33 banding nest. I prefer banding nest a little bit before the third queen. Doesn't really make that much of a difference. He sometimes manages to try and hunt for overlords because of it. Uh, he also gets a very limited amount of zerglings. Very often this game only four. But I think that's also a little bit map dependent. So on a, on a map like Lightshade, I would be very surprised if the amount of Zerglings that he made would also only be 4. But the main, the main thing is that at this point, he has a lair. And if you usually go Roaches, you want an early upgrade. Because upgrades are very important. Not only for your plus 1, but also later in the game you want to have 2-1 at the same time. So usually if you would scout Serral right now, you would see, okay, he has plus 1 missile, right? And now you look at the top right, this means Cyril is not going for an early layer because it is not theoretically possible for him to have this much gas. Especially if you, you would have seen that he morphed a defensive baneling, which is the norm as well. So usually by the time you see the ev evolution chamber wiggling, you can already know right now, Cyril is not playing Mura. There's also the reverse mind game where you play Mura with a plus one melee before the lair. This Mura is severely... Uh, more greedy than the other muda and it's 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 the I, I call this the mind game muda where you just hope your opponent is smart and scouts the evil chamber at the right time and then he thinks you're playing standard roach and that's the only 
that's the only reason why you would play th this muta instead. Like the early melee upgrade doesn't really do anything. It's not really that early to do anything. By the time it hits, your opponent already has Roach Bane, so it's not a melee upgrade to pressure your opponent's third base. This is a mind game melee upgrade. If you ever see someone go melee before lair, that's mostly uh, the reasoning behind it. It's the same reason why Dark always goes lair first, just to make his Roach build look the same as the Muda build. And why would you want to do that? It's because Muda is not safe. Not entirely safe. Now, I know I said this is the safer version of Muda's, but if you play Muda's the way he's doing it right now, so here's a melee upgrade. On this map, this it, he even has the advantage of not having to make a fake Roach Horn, which he usually does, because you can wall off and keep your opponent from scouting, um, even without a Roach Horn. And now also he's going for, always he takes a second gas the moment his lair is done, and then the moment he gets 22 drones from his main and his natural, he has two geysers in a natural finish. He also does this when he goes for roaches. So this is also something that he does different, just so you can't tell the difference between roach and muta. Now this means that he's mining less minerals than someone who's going for a standard opener. So if I'm going for the income graph right here, we see this is the normal opener. Serial is mining more minerals. This means he can get to a higher drone count early on and take a fourth base earlier. So in a standard roach versus roach scenario where let's say Dyke isn't the one going for Muras because this could just as well be have been a roach opener, he would fall slightly behind. That's the reason um, why also defending all ins, even if he decides to go for the roach opener, I hired her because defending all ins is mostly dependent on your mineral income. So that's why also a lot of Koreans have told him that they think it's a little bit greedy the way he plays. But what I wanted to show this game is the strength of Muda. This, this is really why, like why why would you want to take risks? Why why would you want to go mind game your opponent to make him think it's uh, it's Roach even though you're going Muda? It's just so they can't all in it safely, basically, and at the same time, and um, and at the same time. It, every time he usually goes roaches, he also does something weird, like a li weird little, tw little twist, like still going for a delayed spire, so he doesn't just lose the straight up roach fights and roach versus roach. I never really see him go into normal roach versus roach, or very rarely. So, that's the thought process behind. But yeah, Muras in standard games are extremely, extremely powerful. Now, Cyril actually made a couple of roaches, and Dark saw that and immediately reacted with a bunch of spines. Uh, this is the second time they played. The first time Cyril actually went for a Nidus on this map and failed it completely. We're going to take a look at that later on as well. But um, the Ling Bane Muda, the way he plays it is pretty much just standard. Also taking the, the base with the rich gas is completely standard. The way you play Muda is you just go up to, a, you try to get up to a very high Muda count at first. And then you spend a lot of your gas on Baneling run buys and you basically just try to find holds in your opponent's defense. So picking up a geyser here. And the difficulty of playing against it is that until you have vipers and lurkers, if you, you need a big amount of anti-air, which spark colors are fantastic against Muda, but eventually, especially together with Banelings, you need a lot a lot of spread out spark crawlers everywhere, plus lurkers at all the entrances. And especially before lurkers are out, Banelings can do damage, and even after lurkers are out, Banelings can still find damage. So the execution is not uh, that important. This is nothing new. The way he's playing Ling Bane Muda is super standard. Um, in Europe, most Zergs go into Lurkers eventually, but they also still play Ling Bane Muda very aggressively at first. So you always want to try hitting at multiple fronts if you can. He goes in here the moment his plus two finishes up. Gets some bailing damage done. Uh, you also usually always go five gas right away with 10 gas. This is theoretically 12 gas because it's two rich geysers, right? And you can already see him getting ahead in, in supply. This just goes to show how hard it really is to play against Muda because you're um, you're forced into making this many spores. A every single spore is a drone lost plus 75 minerals. So it's very, very expensive. And then at the same time, you need a lot of units to defend against the Banding run buys. And then you also need a lot of tech structures. You need Infestation Pit, Hive, Hydra Den, Lurker Den. Preferably also upgrades. Usually people skip on upgrades very often, especially on the carapace, um, which Cyril ended up getting even. 
So you went uh, plus one missile and then plus one carapace. The reason for that is the plus two is not really necessary because usually Zerg players don't get the uh, carapace upgrades very early, so the Roach is still two shot Zerglings. So that's why he went carapace first. But yeah, and now it's all about being in position. He goes for a cute drop. It's something that I saw Tilo do very frequently with his, uh, with his Muta play. And the Zerglings in the main base get the Hive. And then you start needing to split your army, and then he sees, okay, there are no spark crawlers here, he surrounds the roaches. Queens are out of position. Everything falls apart, just like that. Uh, a simple, not unscouted drop in the main base. And the reason this is all unscouted, and why you need to pre-split your army is because, look at his vision, he sees nothing. You need to basically be ready everywhere to respond. And it's very hard because there is obviously no vision here, like you can't have overlords here. To defend everything so just playing against muta in general for every single zerg serial is not by the way bad against mutas by any means he's actually one of the better players when it comes to playing standard against muta but playing muta is 20 times easier than playing against muta on the highest level as well so um i would always if if you told me okay this guy was gonna get into a standard muta game and he got away with it so he's not gonna get uh, all in and the other guy is trying to play standard i would if two players are on the same level, usually bet on the Muta player. Which, um, the strength of the Muta is the reason why the way he's playing is so strong. Because the way he's playing basically forces people to gamble. This is why you guys see so many all-ins in ZvZ. It's because everyone is afraid to play against Muta. Uh, Serial is all a ton, Rainer is all a ton. All the Koreans are all in but they would do it anyways, I'm pretty sure. Just because they're Korean. Um, but most of the Europeans are mostly all inning because they're afraid of playing normal against Muta. If Muta were to be a lot weaker, so you could play standard normally against Muta without having to be afraid of losing the game the moment you're out of position once. So let's say a single spore would be able to defend the Muta or something crazy like that. People would never play this early layer style. But because Mutas are so strong, this is why Dark is always going for an early layer. So it makes his opponents. And not being not um, uh, being able to just pick an all in and go with it safely, because if he goes for the roaches, he can still hold most of the all ins if he plays it perfectly. So this was the the third game of the finals where uh, Serral was already down 0-2. He went for standard. So this 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 is what Dark wants. He wants to force his opponents to play standard against his Muda style. So let's take a look at the game two that the one that they played before that where Cyril ended up going for uh, an all-in to try and punish Dark. Alright, so now we loaded up into the game number two, which was being played before that. And as I said before, the weakness of his opener is... there. There is no... the, the weakness of the Muta opener, if he goes for the Muta opener, is you die against certain all-ins, or you at the very least always lose your third base against the two or three gas all-ins. And then you certainly are supposed to die against Nidus. So those are the, the weaknesses. But if you go up against the all-ins um, and you, you decide to go for the Roach version yourself, you can defend them. Especially against the Nidus, you even have Roach speed yourself, so it's very easy to defend them. So his, his one style is good against the all-ins. But a little bit worse against the standard play and his other but but not terrible against the standard play and then this other one the muta it just kind of dies against all ins he can hold if his opponent still messes up and it's really strong against standard so in both scenarios it's not a free win either way but this is basically why um the way this is basically the game that die creates where it comes down a lot to mind games and when to pick the correct build order, or the, the importance of that becomes very big. Um, I do believe that just all the, him in general is very very strong, because of the way that he balances his mineral income. We're gonna see that later on as well, I'm gonna take a look at a couple of the games that Rainer played, because Rainer asked me before how I would counter this, and I told him, yeah, I think two gas all are very very powerful against it, also the late all are pretty decent. And I think Rainer in general should basically 5 old him. Uh, I, I, I said this on the TSL stream out of... Um, I mean, because I thought it was funny. But a lot of people don't realize this. This is really what should have happened. Like, Rainer basically won every game and then he threw 
all three games. One was a minor throw, the other two were massive throws, like humongous throws. So Raynor basically destroyed Dark, and uh, we're gonna take a look at that later on as well. So we, we see again he's going for this 330-340 layer. And then very very late he starts his evolution chamber and his roach barn. Early three queens, he has an early creep tumor every time. And now he, he doesn't know anything yet, right? Cyril is pretty good at denying scouting, just as he is at scouting. Cyril gets in, he sees a lair. And Cyril decided to try and punish Dark. He thought Dark was gonna play Muta this game and he went for a plus one carry pace solen. This plus one carry pace solen is pretty bad against Standard Roach. Like it's pretty, pretty bad. Um, it hits very late. And you can hold it with a lot of drones, honestly. You can also get a, up a bunch of spines as well. Like this, this all in is really, really weak in uh, against a standard roach player. So someone that just gets a plus one missile and then starts a lair and then makes a roach horn. You can hold this with up to probably 54 drones or something. Or pro probably even higher, especially on this map. So this is also, on top of that, this is the worst map to all in on. So he still doesn't know anything. He knew this uh, Evo Chamber is upgrading now. And... He will see that Cyril actually moved a bunch of drones here. So at, at this moment, before, especially before these banings came in, he doesn't know anything yet. The one thing that might have tipped him off... Well, this, this for example, looks like Spyro because there's no Roach Warren, right? So the one thing that might have tipped him off is in standard game, he usually puts his Roach Warren here. So it's either a, f a hidden Roach Warren plus an Olin, or it's a Spyro. And I think against both, with his build, you make Roaches at this point because you need to make Roaches very early. So he's floating Larva right now and he will just spend that into Roaches. And I think his plan, if he realized that this was Muda, you probably would have seen gases here. Um, if he realized this was Muda, I think his plan would have been to go Nidus, or at least that's what I would have suggested, because I think that would have worked. But the moment he sees um, this much Larva here, he already knows it's a Roach Allen. No one on a high level, if they were going Muda or Standard Roach, would float this much Larva. And now he confirms, he sees a lot of Roaches. And now he just makes spines and he will crush, he will end up crushing this attack and win this game quite easily. He also gets a fantastic banning connection here. It's the roaches plus kills most of the banings. Banings do not connect with the spines. And he holds this quite easily, right? So even though I said earlier, with roaches, it's with his build you have less minerals, so it's harder to defend all ins. He still manages to defend this all in. Now, there's just a couple of things that I wanted to note. This is the worst map for all ins. So uh, it's a large map and you need to run up a ramp. So this is really not that great to attack into your opponent on. Um, yeah, it's, it's just the single worst one. On Death Aura you can go into the you can go into the third base and you at least don't need to run up a ramp. Because if you actually kill the third base with this build, you're already fine. Um, on pillars, pillars is also very large, but you need to you have a nice concave when you attack, so that's nice. Light Shade would be way better for this all-in. Submarine obviously would be way better for this all-in. Jaganatha would be way better for this all-in. Um, I'm probably missing a map. Oxide also would be a little bit better for this all-in. So this is the, wor the worst one to do this all-in on. But that's just... I, I think that just goes to show that Sarah was just ki kind of trying to call him out on the Mutas. So Dark is kind of trying to make it a, a nice game of chance for him where if he goes Muta, he sometimes defends the all-in. And if he... It, it, but also most of the time he just dies but since he's mixing in the, the, this Roach style um, he can also just get free wins if his opponents decide to go on all, on all ins for, for all ins sorry even on maps that are unfavorable for them because they're that afraid of playing against this Muta right because this Muta is very strong as Muta is really from every player <laughs> to be entirely honest so yeah th this game this game is pretty over let's hop into the next one all right, so the next replay we're going to look at is going to be the... I believe this was the first game between Dark and Rainer in their lower bracket match. And after I showed you guys how uh, well this style can work, now I'm going to show the weakness a little bit. This is actually a game that Dark won, but it was a... Um, <laughs> decently sized throw, to say the least, uh, from, uh, from Rainer. But basi basically what I said earlier about how this, even the Roach is, version, is a little bit greedier than the normal version. Um, I just wanted to emphasize by showing this replay in particular. So he does the same thing again, he goes early third queen, 
Building nest, everything standard. I won't go too in detail, by the way, about Dark's build order because uh, I believe if you guys want to copy something for your Roach games, you should just learn how to play the standard Roach opener with an early upgrade with later gases than what Dark is doing. And if you guys want to play uh, Muda, you can you can go ahead and check out the replays yourself. Uh, this is um, like selling this as Dark style. The way he plays Muda, literally every single pro gamer plays Muda like that. So. Um, you guys can check out his, uh, he's obviously very good at it, but you guys can just check out his Muta timings, uh, layer gas timings and stuff in the replay pack. I'm going to put that in the description, the TSL uh, just released the replay pack a couple days ago, so. Um, yeah, you guys can figure that stuff out yourself, but uh, there, there, there is no need for you guys to, to play this layer first roach stuff because it's not as efficient. It's a little bit greedier and there is no upside besides mind gaming. Whereas your opponents, no matter if you're in Diamond League, no matter if you're in mid Grandmasters, your opponents are not gonna scout for the Evo Chamber and realize that there is a, the plus one is delayed. And because of that, they're gonna try to all in you. I think that will very rarely ever happen. So if you play Roach, just play the little bit the safer version and the more standard version that is better in in more scenarios than not, right? And um, yeah, I think you guys should you guys can learn that one by one. I also believe that, especially on the slightly lower levels, you can um, defend most stuff with the Muta opener in three base versus three base scenarios. So definitely, the Muta build is something that you guys can learn if you never tried it. Muta playing Muta itself is pretty easy. So this game so far, nothing really happened, and Dark is going again. Four gas lair. Pl pl delay plus one and now he sees the roaches at this moment in time his lair is done so first difference to a normal build right so his lair is done this is minerals and the gas that he's not gonna get back because usually that's what you cancel so instead he decides to cancel his uh, plus one missile now the thing is after this roach horn is done which by the way jaganatha is a relatively short map if you use both of these so, so uh, the rush distance is quite short. After this is done, he's not going to have extra minerals over after he makes the roaches. He basically has uh, a lot of gas mined already. So he's making those roaches and now he doesn't have minerals for extra spines. If you play in a normal game, you scout it at the same time, you cancel the lair, your plus one will be uh, soon, to, soon to finish. It won't finish in time for this attack in particular, but very shortly after. So if the fight takes a longer time, which oftentimes happens, uh, the plus one kicks in and then what you can do is you can make two spines and you can afford like an extra two spines which makes a huge difference uh, if you scout it in advance you can try to put them at the front and in general you, you can just have a little bit more to work with now he also gets supply block but he basically spent his uh, his money mostly on roaches and now he starts the roach speed because he realizes he's supply blocked Either way, I do not believe that with this he could have defended the third base even though he stopped at 44 drones against 37 so he basically had the perfect drone count. If you play normal and you, you're you being all in of like two gas, let's say 37 drones the way Rainer is doing it right now, the perfect drone count would be 44. It literally would be the perfect drone count. You want, don't want to be at the same drone count because you want to have an advantage afterwards. And you, you basically want the most amount of drones possible to where you can still comfortably hold, which usually would be the case. But since he has less maneuvers to work with than usual, uh, um, it just becomes very hard and he ends up losing is third base. Also just breaking out is pr pr pretty much impossible at this point. He loses all the units that spawn from here. And he realizes that, okay, he, you can't play Roach, Roach versus Roach from this scenario and he immediately throws an Aspire, which is the only thing he could have done to potentially come back into this game. Now Rainer kills the wall. There is nothing he could have done about that. So at this point of the game, I'm gonna wait until this run of drones finishes up from Rainer. So you guys can see the severity of the, the lead that Rainer threw. Okay, so now we're at 49 workers, ahead in upgrades, 3 base versus 2 base, um, way, way fewer army units, so even just re-expanding could be a pain. Uh, no road speed on the way, the, the tech advantage you have is a spire now. But Rainer is in, in an absolutely fantastic situation. So I just wanted to show this to, to show you guys that even if you go for the Roach build that Dark is doing, it can be very hard to defend against that build. Now Dark played this a ton more times and I actually thought about which replays to analyze. 
But I honestly don't think there is too much to analyze uh, in depth about what he what he's doing. I just wanted to 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 basically talk with you guys about how important the mind games are in the style that he's playing, and um, and to explain the reasoning behind the things that he's doing. And um, well, in the end, as in in the start of the video, I'm pretty sure I promise that I'm gonna talk about if I think this will be the new go-to or anything like that. I don't think this will be the case, but I think this is already something that. Um, like these fake, fake mind games that people abuse, especially if they're the underdog in a series. This is not the most solid way of playing, obviously, because he plays Muras in around half his games. So if you all in him in around, if you all in him in the in the, in the right games, he will just lose against players that are also worse than him. Do I think he's better than Saru now? Is also another question that I get asked a lot. Um, I, th I I think people have extreme recency bias. When it comes to comes to those kind of questions, like was Dark worse than Cyril after he lost the first series, and then is he a week later all of a sudden is he better because he forowed him, or is it really just because Starcraft players can also just have a bad day or just a bad game? Like one simple mistake can ex can change the entire game of Starcraft at that level, and uh, at the same time also the one simple decision of okay if Cyril swapped the strategies that he played in game number two and three. I think he would have um, had a great chance to win both of those games. Game one, he lost because he underestimated the link flood with 12 pool. You're not supposed to lose against a link flood with 12 pool. Game four, he does an all in, right? And dark, dark. That was actually a pretty sick all. If you ever struggle against gas pool hatch all ins, dark was pretty underprepared and then had really nice uh, wall rewall and good queen movement. So if you guys want to check that out, that was the fourth game of the grand finals. But basically, like, like. Do those games really give us the information that Dark is way better than Cyril? Like, if, if they play against each other again, I'm pretty sure I would put my money on Cyril. Uh, let's, let's say if there were 50-50 odds, right? And I think maybe some players might be inspired by this, but uh, we knew this existed before, so I don't think we're gonna see a big shift in the meta or anything like that, just because he had success with it now. We also saw Years before, Dark sometimes losing against Zerg players that are worse by him. He sometimes got bopped by Rogue. And um, and yeah, I don't think this changes too much for the pro gamers themselves. And as I said before, I don't think this is something that you guys should copy, especially this Roach opening. But it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a great Muta opener. It's a very standard Muta opener. So if you guys ever wondered how to go into Muta, this is pretty much the way. Uh, if you guys want to want me to analyze the timings a little bit more in depth rather than just talking about the general idea which is what this video was about uh, you guys can leave comments below and if you guys want to want me to analyze any other styles of any other players you guys can also tell me i don't think this is a clown style by the way just because i'm oftentimes getting misquoted ever since i did a team liquid interview uh, i believe clown styles are the styles that are not supposed to work in zvz which dark also sometimes does for example he played on Oxide against Cyril in their first series. Like, randomly, he just starts morphing eight banings and goes at the time where there is already Roach Bane of his opponent. Like, the stuff that's never supposed to work, that's the clown style. But there are, like, sharp all-ins. Muta is not a clown style. Muta is super legit because it's basically a game of chance where your, your opponent can't reactively decide to bl counter the Mutas, right? It's a blind counter that you have to decide on early on. That's why Mutas are so strong. And then... Um, like, going for this road stuff is also not really a clown style. Just, cl clown styles are like delayed Ling Bane all ins or going for weird upgraded Zergling timings, that kind of stuff, right? So that's just, I wanted to get that off my chest as well. If you guys enjoyed this kind of stuff, you can also let me know. For now, if you guys want to help me out, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell and leave a like. And see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.